Good morning and welcome to the Home and Finance Show. I'm Janice Bradley with JB Real Estate Consultants. My co-host, Diana Rice Wilkerson with Fairway Independent Mortgage. Home and Finance is designed to provide you the most credible information that we poss possibly can and current, and current because day to day to day it changes. But we're gonna go on with the show. We have the most fantastic fantastic program for you guys. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to get right on it um, and introduce Mark Nalen, Director of Asset Preservation, Indiana Housing and Community Authority. So that's a mouthful. It really is. But Mark, why don't you just uh, welcome, first of all, to the Home and Finance Show. Um, this uh, TV show is relatively new for us, so we are just honored that you can take the time to be with us. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and the listening audience is waiting for you. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, again, I'm Mark Nealon with Indiana Housing and Community Development Authority. You can say IHCDA if that's too big a mouthful for you. But I wanted to come here today and talk to you about Indiana's Hardest Hit Fund. Indiana's Hardest Hit Fund is a mortgage payment assistance program that's funded by the federal government. The program came about several years ago, about a decade ago, actually, mm -hmm. when we experienced the economic crisis uh, following the 2008 mortgage meltdown. And Indiana was one of 19 uh, states, actually 18 states and then the District of Columbia that received funding. Uh, Indiana received almost $284 million to provide direct to lender mortgage payment assistance. So what we can do with this program is if you are a homeowner and you've experienced an involuntary employment related financial hardship, um, something like a job layoff or your hours were cut, um, a temporary work stoppage, whatever the case may be, you can and you get behind on your mortgage or you're having difficulty making your monthly mortgage payment, we can provide you a no interest, no payment loan to help you uh, keep your mortgage current. And we would make those payments on your behalf directly to your lender. That's phenomenal. I mean, that is, that I'm just surprised it's still going on. I, I really am surprised the program is still going on and we definitely do need it. So um, how do people qualify? Who qualifies? Okay, so to qualify, you have to be an Indiana homeowner. Um, you have to live in the home and only own one property with a mortgage on it. It's okay if you own more than one property, but you can only have one mortgaged property. And then if you um, experience, as I said, if you've experienced an involuntary employment related financial hardship, and, and these can be um, some of anything, but most recently in the current climate that we're in, we see a lot of people whose jobs have shut down because of COVID or uh, and may have shut down either permanently or temporarily. Those are the individuals that we are looking for. Those are the individuals that we are trying to help. And we can help homeowners who are either currently unemployed and can't make that monthly mortgage payment, or if a homeowner was perhaps unemployed, they got behind on their mortgage, now they're back to work and they can make their monthly mortgage payment moving forward, but they don't have that two or three months lump sum that they missed. We can come in and provide a one-time lump sum payment to bring that mortgage current and then allow the homeowner to make their mortgage payments moving forward. We can provide up to $30,000 per household and we can, pay, we can make monthly payments for up to six months. Fantastic program. I know quite a bit about it because I am a certified short sale so um, specialist. So, um, you know, I know there's situations and we have to co go to you guys to kind of get some help when um, they have to either sell their house because of a short sale or just right now I've had situations where um, 
is, you know, is just that they are selling their house. Now, you made a comment that I don't know if I, I, that I was aware of, and that is, okay, so do you have to be laid off or it has to be, um, I guess, work-related? So what would happen if it's uh, maybe a divorce or it's a, um, uh, a, death, in a, a death situation that caused the um, delay in payments, but, you know, their income is, is changed? Is that something that Hardest Hit can also get involved in? Yes, it is. It is. And we, we stretch that definition of work related as far as we can stretch it <laughs> to help as many people as we can. Okay. So if, if you experienced, uh, if you were a two uh, household income or two income household and you experienced the divorce and now that, that employment income from the former spouse is no longer household income. Good to uh, know. By our definition, that's, that's employment related. Uh, if you have a spouse uh, who passed away and that, that spouse was employed and, and had was generating employment income, again, that's employment related. So we, we really do try to stretch that definition as far as we possibly can. So how does one access the service? I mean, who do they call? Where can they find the assistance? Okay, we, we have, uh, there are a couple of ways you can find us. You can call us, we have a toll-free number, that's 877-GET-HOPE, 877-G-E-T-H-O-P-E, it's 877-438-4673, they made me memorize that, <laughs> or you can go to our website, our website is 877-GET-HOPE.ORG, that's 877 877- GetHope.org. If you go to our website and you want more information about the program, you can click on the Frequently Asked Questions or FAQ link at the top of the page, and there more information is there. But it's an online application. You can click Apply and begin to input your information. Once you uh, put your basic information in, it takes just a few steps to get your information in. You will then uh, be connected, it takes a few days, but you'll be referred to a certified housing counselor working at a, a HUD approved agency who can help you uh, complete the application, uh, provide you guidance, collect any documentation that we need from you and help get that information over to us. And your, your housing counselor will actually submit that application electronically through IHCDA, and we'll take it from there. You know, I really don't think I knew exactly how that worked. And the reason I'm saying that is that I don't know if I was under the impression, and maybe there's just there's two ways. So when a homeowner is behind and they're working with their lender, and um, maybe they could do a modification or forbearance or whatever the situation may be, so, um, does the lender recommend that, do they call you and maybe um, this is how you can also get involved with the hardest hit? I don't know that I understand exactly how the homeowner can directly call how a hardest hit. And I know you have to be engaged with the lender somehow. Kind of share with us how that works, please. Sure, sure. So we have over 300 lenders who have signed on to participate in the hardest hit fund with us. And we have direct contacts with all of those lenders. And so when you apply for hardest hit fund assistance, we will actually reach out to our contact at your lender and we send them some information via secure electronic communication. We let them know we have this homeowner, here's their information. Can you please verify that they have a loan with you? Let us know what the current status is, how far, if they're behind, how far they are, what their monthly mortgage payment is, uh, and then let us know if you're willing to accept hardest hit fund assistance. And, and from there, once your lender uh, approves, and once we let your lender know that we're working with you and that we've looked at your information and that we feel that you qualify for the program, if your lender says, yes, we will accept hardest hit fund assistance, then we will draft up the paperwork. We have, we use 
a mobile closing team. So we would have somebody contact the homeowner at their convenience, meet them at the time and place of their choosing to sign and notarize the documents. They would then send those documents back to us. And from there, we would send your payment electronically directly to the lender. I actually have to share with you that I was smiling inside a little bit when you indicated where the lender will accept your funds. <laughs> I don't know why that sounds kind of crazy to me because, you know, that's how they're getting paid. So, I mean, are there instances where they're saying no? There are some instances when they're saying no. One of the most common uh, instances is if someone is in an active bankruptcy. Uh, because when they're in an active bankruptcy, bankruptcy law uh, prevents the lender from trying to collect the debt. And so the banks don't want to run afoul of bankruptcy laws. So if there's an active bankruptcy, oftentimes the lender will say, no, we can't accept the money. And But then once the bankruptcy is discharged and completed, then we could move forward. Um, so my question is, I'm a loan officer. So as a loan officer, I know the speed in which I can close a loan has a lot to do with the customer and how quickly they provide documents. How quickly can someone actually close on a hardest hit request? In a perfect world, we could get this thing done in 30 days or less. Wow. Um, but it, it's right now, especially with, with COVID uh, and the challenges we face there, world isn't exactly as perfect as we would like. Uh, so it does take us a little bit longer, usually around 45 days. But typically what we do is when we reach out to the lender and they provide us the information back, they give us, and, and both of you will be familiar with this, they'll give us a good through date. And so they'll give <laughs> us the information. They'll, they'll tell us this is how far behind they are. This is what their monthly mortgage payment is, and this information is good through March 31st. Uh, once we get that information, then we will do everything uh, in, in our power to get that loan closed, get those documents out to you, get them signed, get them back to us so we can have that electronic payment going out to that homeowner before that, that quote expires. So question, oh, go ahead, will you finish? Oh, I was just gonna say, it's just, it's very important for the homeowner to, to stay on top of things, work with their housing counselor, provide the documentation. Uh, the, the quicker the homeowner can get the information to the housing counselor, the quicker we can get the loan closed and the money out to the lender. So uh, you answered the question that I was going to um, ask you. So it does seem like that the, um, the homeowners are calling um, hardest hit quicker than they used to. Are they calling you guys? Are they still actually um, getting forbearance or something of this nature with, the, um, with their lender? It seems like to me people are hearing more and more about hardest hit and they're calling you directly, more directly now. And double question, how far are they usually behind in their payments when you, you're receiving the calls? Generally, um, and I'll answer the, the, the second question first, uh, most homeowners that, that we encounter are 60 to 90 days or more delinquent. Okay. Um, in terms of, of them contacting us, yes, homeowners can contact us. Some are referred uh, by their lenders. And uh, could you repeat the first part of that question? I'm getting old. <laughs> I haven't the slightest idea what it was. Well, I guess I was just asking you about the increase in the um, homeowners calling you first, then going through their lender, you know, for forbearance or anything else. Yeah, are they, does, do you see the increase of them calling you directly first? Yes, that's, that's starting to increase, especially as uh, the forbearance periods come closer to an end. Okay. Uh, it's been a little confusing, and I can understand how homeowners get confused because they have, uh, on the one hand, they may see some advertising um, online for the hardest hit fund or may hear about the hardest hit fund from a friend or a relative, but then they're, 
they also have their their lender calling them saying, well, if you need a forbearance, we can offer you a forbearance. And so sometimes that's uh, that's confusing for homeowners. And we've actually had homeowners say, well, no, I don't need hardest hit fund because my lender gave me a forbearance. But what I want all homeowners to understand is that forbearance is just a temporary grace period. That's just a period where the lender's going to say, well, you don't have to make your, your mortgage payment for this period of time. But when that forbearance runs out, that lender typically is going to want their money. And the lender's going to do one of two things. They're either going to say, we want all of that money, all of that past due money right now, or they're going to say, we're going to extend the length of your loan and we're gonna tack that on to the end of your loan so that over time, you end up paying more interest on that money that you didn't pay now while you were in forbearance. And Mark so when a, homeowner, when, when a homeowner leaves a forbearance period, mm -hmm. that's a really good time, especially if they're in a, in a position to make their monthly mortgage payment moving forward. That's a really good time to come to Hardest Hit Fund because if you weren't able to make your mortgage payment for three, four, five months, but now you can, and the lender wants all of that back mortgage payment from your forbearance, that's when we can step in and provide that one-time lump sum payment, bring your mortgage current, and then let you move forward. You know, we might have to replay this show every week. What you just said about that forbearance situation is just unbelievable. And uh, Diana and I, we could just kiss you, we'll say, because there's such a misunderstanding of exactly how that works. Let's talk a little bit about um, paying you back, paying hardest, hardest hit back. Um, when do you have to pay it back? Or are there situations where you don't have to pay it back? Can you share that with us? Absolutely. So the hardest hit fund assistance is a loan. Um, it's similar to a second mortgage, but much better than borrowing money from a traditional lender because there is no interest. There are no monthly payments where you have to pay us back. And if you keep your home for 10 years, the loan is completely forgiven. So what we do is when you get to, after five years, when you get to year six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, each year we knock off 20% of that balance. So if you keep your home six years, you'll only owe 80% of what you borrowed. If you keep it seven years, you, you'd only owe six years and so on. Now, the other good thing about this is it's only repayable if you generate net proceeds from a refinance sale or transfer of the home. So what that means is you only have to pay us back if you are trying to do a cash out and put money in your pocket or you sell your home and you make a profit or you transfer it to someone else and somehow generate a profit. So, it, and it's only repayable to the extent that you make a profit. So let's say for example, you came to us and you received $10,000 in hardest hit fund assistance. And then after a couple of years, you went to sell your home and you sold your home and you made $1,000 in profit from selling your home. You would pay back the hardest hit fund, $1,000, and we would forgive the other 9,000. Now, in the instance of a refinancing, again, if you're refinancing your home and you're taking cash out, then uh, we won't do what's called a subordination. And I don't wanna get too technical um, for, for your guests. Um, and I know both of you know what a subordination is, but it's simply where we say, we've given you a loan, we're in sort of second place, we would get paid back second um, if you were to pay us back. When you go get another loan, 
that loan would then be behind ours. They'd be in second place, but behind ours. But what we can do is we can agree to go back into second place to allow you to get that loan. And we'll do that as long as you're not trying to put money in your pocket. So if you try to refinance your home and you just want to take advantage of the low interest rates that we have now and get a better interest rate, then we'll sign what's called a subordination agreement. We'll go back into second place behind your new loan so that you can get that better interest rate. And now in terms of cash out refinance, we do try to be lenient there. So if there are necessary structural repairs, such as a leaking roof or your pipes burst or something like that, and you don't have the, the money to cover those kinds of repairs, then we'll allow, we'll still subordinate even if you cash out a little bit. But what we can't do, and this is because we, we are using federal taxpayer funds, we can't subordinate or we can't go back into second place if you want to cash out and get a new hot tub. <laughs> That's something that we can't do. But for necessary structural repairs, things like that, we'll work with you as best we can. Good to know. Got a couple of questions. Is there a waiting list for those who might need this service? So like if all of a sudden, because as this word gets out, I can see people reaching out, um, are, pe are, are, are housing counselors available to take them on and get them through the yes. process? Okay. Yes, we That's do have housing counselors available to take them on. We have about 10 agencies that we work with uh, that are in, in scattered throughout the state. And uh, they will work with homeowners and, and we, we, uh, we push them pretty hard to get in touch with the homeowners quickly once we make a referral. Um, so there aren't, there aren't waiting lists, but it is first come first serve. And because we're still working with the money that we received nearly a decade ago, we're, we're, we're running short. So oh, we're down yeah. to probably about the last $5 million. Um, and so time is of the essence um, and the program's also running out. So we have to have the decisions made on all of our applications no later than June 30th of this year. Wow. So mm -hmm. we're probably going to have to stop taking applications in probably about eight weeks, in about two mm -hmm. months, and mm -hmm. probably in about early May, we're going to have to stop taking applications so that we have enough time to process everything that we have before June 30th. Now, once we make that decision, again, if you're, you're an individual who's going to receive monthly payment assistance, again, we can provide up to six months if you qualify. And so we can continue making payments all the way through December 31st of this year, but we have to get you in the program and approve you by June 30th or there's no shot. What my first question is, let's say I'm a person that has signed up for forbearance. I am in a financial crunch. I don't want my credit to get you know messed up by, by being late. I've signed up for forbearance. Can I also at that point reach out to the hardest hit fund and say, hey, this is my situation, reduced income, whatever, for, for the hardest hit fund to actually make those payments for me? Yes, so you can always reach out to us. Okay. And at that point, even if you're in a forbearance, uh, what we'll do then is when we, uh, we, as I mentioned before, we reach out to the lender and we try to verify information, we tell them, at that point, it sort of varies by lenders. Some lenders will say, sure, you will accept hardest hit fund, even though they're in a forbearance, and you can still make those payments to us. Other lenders say, well, if, you, if they want to accept hardest hit fund, they have to come out of the forbearance and in the forbearance, and then we can make the payments. But again, we will reach out to our contacts at the lender and and see what they say and we'll let the counselor know and, and our counselor will work with the homeowner to try to provide them the best option the best mm -hmm. the best so option. we certainly want those lenders 
I mean, or those homeowners, even if you're in a forbearance, please, please go ahead and reach out to us um, and let us inquire with your lender. And then we'll hopefully be able to present you with some options so you can make a decision. Do you want to continue with the forbearance or perhaps receive hardest hit fund assistance? Um, how many families would you say the hardest hit fund has served in our state? Uh, in our state, since our inception, we, we provided our first assistance in May 2011. Um, so we're coming up on 10 years. We've assisted over 11,000 homeowners uh, awesome. in all 92 counties That's and awesome. provided over $182 million in assistance. And I believe, and I, I, I apologize for not looking at the numbers before I joined you there, but I believe we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 11,300 or so homeowners that we've assisted across the state. Great. That's a lot of families. There's no if and buts about it. Well, my heart is saddened when I heard you say that when the money's gone, the money's gone. Is that what we're saying? So will there not be any more, I mean, like in another year? or anything like that? Because what happens to Hardest Hit? Are we just saying it goes away? Hardest Hit will, will go away. And, and we've actually been lucky. Hardest Hit Fund was originally scheduled to go away in December of 2017. Wow. But we got lucky and it's been extended. Mm -hmm. Now, will there be other money? Oh, Time no. will tell. Uh, okay. And that depends on uh, those representatives and senators in Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. as they debate and talk about the different types of COVID-related assistance packages uh, exactly. that they may pass. And so exactly. that's one other thing that, that homeowners and constituents can do. Uh, call your, your U.S. congressman, call your United States senator and tell them we need help out here, and we need you to pass, as part of this legislation, some funding similar to Hardest Hit Fund so that we can assist these homeowners who've been negatively impacted by COVID. Thank we you, Mark. We certainly want to thank you so much for this information. Could you real quickly give out the um, website again or the telephone number? Absolutely. The website is 877gethope.org. 877gethope.org and the phone number is 1-877-GET-HOPE. That's 877-438-4673. Thank Marvelous. you. Marvelous. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You're very welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.